Do you feel sad about the demise of the people? Yes, mainly because they were so immensely useful. Mm -hmm. And if you think about housing need in any society, really, uh, low cost, accessible, good quality housing mm -hmm. is necessary, certainly for young people, uh, for their first home. And certainly it's necessary for elderly people mm -hmm. uh, who occasionally have visitors and who can give proper use to a two bedroom or by conversion, a one bedroom house. And God knows over the decades since we've had incessant housing crisis. We've got a huge housing crisis uh, because of the lack of supply and fantastic costs of housing in this country now. And their waiting is a 70-year-old remedy mm -hmm. that could be effectively put into action mm -hmm. called prefabricated housing. So you feel prefabs that can be an answer to sure, I'm, the I'm, housing shortage? When we had a Labour government in the 1970s, there was a move, supported by several of us, to try and help to mitigate the housing crisis of those days mm -hmm. uh, with uh, a, a programme for building prefabricated houses. Uh, it never came to anything. And then again in the 80s, I supported efforts to do it. I would certainly support that now mm -hmm. because these prefabricated houses, low cost, low rent, or even for purchase. So easy to maintain. And would, really, would, yeah. very easy to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they can be in, intensively deployed mm -hmm. um, with decent space around them. Yeah. They are made like bricks in a community. Mm -hmm. And consequently, they could respond to and answer many of the problems of housing in Britain now. Well, you're taking away the community spirit, aren't you? Yes, amongst the people. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, you know, which is a shame, really. That's right. It? Yeah. So, do you think? Do you feel the community spirit is quite specific to the prefabs? It's, kind of it's it's common, but the great thing about prefabs is they are open. Mm. They face each other. Yeah. Yeah. There's always somebody at the back, and so you can't be isolated in a prefab. It is your home, your castle, mm. but you can't really be isolated. Yeah. And because they're so distinctive mm. and found in their mainly one or two hundred, mm. then uh, the automatic assumption of prefabricated housing development being a community ready built is very obvious indeed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, efficiency in housing means a secure, affordable, mm -hmm properly proportioned mm -hmm. dwelling. Yeah. That's what efficiency yeah. means in housing. Mm -hmm. It might mean something else with motor cars or fur coats, mm -hmm. but if you want to define housing efficiency, mm -hmm. then uh, certainly those features come into it, mm -hmm. and the fact that they are energy efficient as well. Mm -hmm. The materials of which they are built are in many ways impervious, mm -hmm. and as long as you ensure good maintenance of the windows and doors, then they're very, very good yeah. at retaining uh, energy, retaining heat. And just going back to kind of when you grew up, um, did living in that community, did it form your political opinions or kind of how you looked at, at the world? Oh, the it certainly community? made a contribution to that. There's no question at all. First of all, there's the idea of community, of mm -hmm. interdependence, mm -hmm. which wasn't a, a pious idea or a, a, f a philosophical um, stance, mm -hmm. it was a reality. Mm -hmm. People actually helped each other mm -hmm. and uh, they were disposed to do that um, and that extended obviously beyond this small prefabricated estate mm -hmm. that I was on but that taught me from a very young age um, if you want to get anything done mm -hmm. you have to have numbers, you have to have people with you and so collective action you have to be is united a, exactly mm. absolutely united mm. it's so <laughs> obvious yeah. people are not designed to live upwards they're mm. designed to live horizontally yeah. um, and the problem with flats is even though they are collective they are over collective mm. they're a source of pressure and tension very often whereas living in an estate even a two or three story estate mm doesn't impose the same kind of pressure on people. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, it, houses like this are accessible to people with disabilities, mm -hmm. to young families with pushchairs. Uh, it, <laughs> so they make so much sense for so much of people's lives mm -hmm. 
certainly when they're young, certainly when they're old, and for a lot of people, in between that too. Right. And of course, the affordability is fundamental. Because even if you built these new now, you'd still be talking about a relatively low occupation price with relatively low energy bills and uh, maintenance cost. Mm -hmm. And that all makes a terrific difference to people's general standard of living. We have got uh, several facets of the current economic difficulty in Britain, in other countries too, but I know Britain best, obviously. And two of those facets are a shortage of affordable housing, which of course pushes housing costs up even more because of scarcity. And secondly, we've got a shortage of jobs, especially in manufacturing industries. Well, solve two problems. Let's start to make prefabricated parts of housing again, assemble the houses, build them, and help very, very rapidly. That's the point about prefabs, very rapidly. Uh, from the first piece of steel extruded to occupation, needn't take a year. There's a shortage of space though, of course. Yeah, well, there isn't a shordage of space. Uh, something like 11% of the surface area of the United Kingdom mm -hmm. is occupied by urban development. Now, inside that urban development, there are huge brown, so-called brownfield sites that have been developed for industrial and uh, housing reasons, commercial reasons, fallen into disuse. Mm -hmm. If we did a proper audit of the facilities available, we wouldn't have to make incursions into the green spaces. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of land in already developed areas, now fallen into disuse. Many in quite desirable areas mm -hmm. which could accommodate a, uh, a prefabricated housing development. The other thing is, of course, prefabs don't have to be single story. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there's a whole generation of prefabricated two story, three bedroom houses. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no reason, given the development of technology, why we couldn't have a 21st century version of prefabs mm -hmm. in order to resolve a major, serious crisis, social crisis in our country the housing crisis and solve it by means of attacking another crisis, the crisis of unemployment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the trouble is with a lot of, of uh, councils today, though, they're, they're developing the land and sending it off to the highest bidders, aren't they? Sure. It's sort of a question of money at the end of the day, isn't it? They're under terrific yeah. uh, financial pressures and they've been suffering awful cuts. I live in Islington in North London. Yeah. The scale of the cuts there, in excess of 300 million pounds, are gigantic. Mm. And the council is having to scrape and uh, borrow and yeah. uh, sell off and do all kinds of things, some of which I accept as necessities, some of which I strongly dislike. Mm. But it's because of the very short-sighted view that the only way to resolve our crisis mm. is through this so-called program of austerity, mm. or actually, the resolution of the crisis and the social crisis as well as the economic crisis mm -hmm. is in the opposite direction by investment and development, mm -hmm. not by trying to squeeze everything until you get the last. How would you assess Lewisham's kind of treatment of this, of this estate, the way that they kind of don't, Lewisham councils? Well, it, it uh, seems to me on the basis of very short acquaintance, I'll readily acknowledge that, it seems to me that the attitude of the local authority is incoherent. I mean, this is a local authority that's always had a very, very good reputation, notably in housing, but not only in housing. And from what I've heard, um, it appears that there is no dependable, clear, public, well understood strategic plan. And the lack of understanding isn't uh, just a, a feature of the tenants or the local community. That lack of understanding appears to have infected the people responsible in the council. So the sooner they get a grip on it, the better. The capacity certainly exists, even in difficult times. Yeah. If Labour comes back after the next election, do you think they would go for prefabs? I don't think they'd go for prefabs. No, no. I think I'm certain that they will hugely expand the housing programme. I know that they will do that.
And I'm not thinking of using new sorts of prefabs or... No, I mean they might be using new technological techniques. I don't know about that, but I do know their commitment is to a huge expansion uh, to address the housing problem, which is pervasive and deep, but also as a means of generating new investment and creating jobs. They need to put a lot of money back into industries, don't they? Because it's great work for people to be able to help the economy, you know? But Absolutely. they don't seem to be doing that at all, do they? Well, they're not, uh, because uh, British investment <coughs> has been characterised by wanting a very fast return, yeah. and a very large return. And by definition, if you're going to invest in um, successful manufacturing industry, the investment has got to be long-term, like the Japanese, yeah. like the Germans, like parts of France. And we haven't had that. So when the private sector won't do it, public sector has got to do it and uh, obviously you will only get investment in industries where there is demand for the produce well we certainly got the demand for housing and for everything that goes with it Why should all the furniture say? all yeah. the fittings yes. all the paint all the other parts of housing that are fundamental to recovery of industry in this country oh yes 